Well, hey crafty friends, it's Heidi Scott with DIY Dreaming, and on this probably pretty quick video, I'm going to show you this whole tone on tone idea um, in a larger size, like what we did yesterday. And I'm going to show you how those turned out, because they turned out great. I ended up adding um, edging with my palette knife. Um, anyways, we're going to be doing this blue. And then we're going to do this plaster color with um, almond latte chalk paste. Uh, so it should be fun. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I'll tell you everything here. Uh, the idea is that you create a backdrop to whatever your, your focal point of your project is by having a, a background and a design that are very similar colors like blue and blue, or cream and cream. I thought that this might um, sort of disappear a little more than it did, because um, I did something similar with white. Can you, can you kind of see that? Yesterday for that one. And I honestly think I like the white chalk paste better than the almond latte. But anyways, so that's what I'm talking about. I'll take you through all the steps as you are hopping on. Say hello. Let me know uh, where you're watching from. Feel free to sprinkle, all that good stuff. Let me know if you've tried this yet. All right. Um, for me, this whole process started with some black stretch canvases that I use my favorite stencil, which is called the Victorian Pattern uh, stencil. I used it on top with some black chalk paste, and it created this like, I don't know, this background that looked almost three-dimensional or something. Um, and then just recently, I've been uh, just seeing things online, and my friend Joey Bailey did this idea uh, with the new tartan pattern stencil. And uh, so I decided to give it a try and to experiment with colors. So basically what you're going to do, we'll start with this one. This is just a Dollar Tree stretch canvas. I don't know what the size is, 11 by 14 or something. Um, and I painted this one with one good coat of this ocean blue. Um, this is inexpensive, easy to use craft paint that I pick up every time I'm in Walmart. Uh, so it was one coat, and then I went outside, and I gave it a quick spray of clear matte sealer spray just to make it so that what I'm stenciling doesn't pull up the paint and to make it look a little bit crisper. And, um, and then we're going to do a design over the top of it in blue chalk paste. And these are some of our options. This is what I was going to do. This is um, the tartan plaid, the new tartan plaid. This is Asian floral. This is uh, fall leaves. This is fleur de lis. This is a good one, too. This one is called Mandela Lace. This one is still in the package, but it's called Dragonfly Pattern. Here's the one I was talking about. Um, I still think I'm going to use that tartan plaid. This is Victorian pattern. This is really cool. It's new. I think it's called Abstract Lines. Can't remember what this one is called. This is Mushrooms. And basically, you're just getting the point that there's lots of all over pattern stencils to choose from. This is my second favorite all over pattern stencil. It's called Filigree Leaf. This one is awesome. Um, this is new Fa La La, there's snowflakes, there's loads of different uh, all over pattern stencils. And later today, I'm going to post a ton of pictures because I've been sorting this afternoon, going way, way, way back, like three, four years um, of projects that I've done using an all over pattern stencil. Okay, so anyways, I painted it. Let it dry. This is a flat stretched canvas, but you can do whatever kind you want. You can even do this on a board, like on a wood panel. Um, I painted it with one coat of that Waverly, let it dry, and then I sprayed it. 
and we're going to use this and I am going to fuzz it just a little bit although I've used it quite a few times you know what I'm not it's not too sticky anymore and when I lay it down and press it on it will sort of re-stick itself okay so you just you kind of want to look to see where things are starting and ending yesterday I had a lot of problems with my um, stencils not being straight so let me just get this so I'm satisfied that it's straight-ish okay we're gonna say that's straight-ish and um, and then we're going to use this blue chalk paste, which is called Old Navy. Is that what it's called? Old Glory. <laughs> Old Glory Blue. It's a great color. Grab a stir stick. I think I want to give it just a little pump of some distilled water. I haven't used this in a while. And just so you know, these chalk pastes, um, you can't, can't buy them and leave them for two years and never use them because they, they started their lives as a hard rock, calcium bicarbonate, and then they were ground up and moisture was added to create a paste that pigment was put into. But they have a tendency to want to go back to a solid. So um, I think the shelf life for these is around six months to a year, and if you find yours getting a little bit thick, you can add distilled water. Not regular water, because you don't want to grow a science experiment. Okay, so I'm just going to put a couple of blobs on here. We'll see. I can never tell if that's going to be enough, not enough, too much. Let me see if I can go up a little bit higher. So maybe if I move back. And I'm scared because I feel like my phone is going to tip over. All right. So, you're just going to pull this chalk paste with a squeegee through the holes on your stencil. And once you get it on and you get the globs removed, then the important thing is to stop. I have been having fun. I'm going to show you all these completed projects from yesterday in just a few minutes. And I'll show you what I'm talking about when I say that I used a palette knife to finish some of these off. My palette knives are from Dollar Tree. <laughs> uh, so it's nothing fancy. And the reason why we're using a blue on a blue is so that it's not so loud that you couldn't do a pattern over the top. This is creating a, a backdrop. Okay, I'm going to put this back in here. And I'm just going to quick pull up the big globs. looks like let's take a little peek oh it looks really good oh my gosh wow 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 okay I'm gonna throw this in my tub of water over here wow oh my goodness 
This is fabulous. Okay, this is gonna take a couple of hours to be fully dry, and then I will take it outside and spray it um, before I do the next uh, the next thing, which let me show you what it is gonna be most likely. Because I've been thinking about it and I've decided. Let me put this in my tub of water. Okay, I think what I'm going to do with that, once it's dry and it has been, um, it has had a, a spray, is I'm going to add this stencil, Greatest Life Faithfulness, which I want to show you my t-shirts. Um, this is from Lamentations 323. This is a fabulous stencil. And I think I'm going to do it in white. Um, so, I'm going to get my fingers cleaned off and then I'll show you the t-shirts. On Sunday for Christ and Crafting, we used that stencil. And I don't want to get this blue chalk paste on it. And it turned out fabulous. Here it is. And I showed how to, uh, on that video, I showed how, this is ink, by the way, not uh, chalk paste. This is very blue ink. And then white ink for the stencil. But I showed on Sunday how to do this ombre effect. And that was the stencil that we used. So that's what I'm thinking to do with the blue is this one okay so let's show you this and then we'll do the last one okay these are the little canvases that i did yesterday showing you can you sort of see how that backdrop kind of disappears but it sort of looks almost 3d this is plaster colored waverly paint which is my favorite color with white chalk paste on the tartan plaid. And then I used these Faith, Hope, and Love arrow stencils that I forgot I even had, and some black chalk paste to do the design. And then I used a palette knife. Let's see, do I have one? I think they're both out in the kitchen. Well, let me just show you with this. It looks like this, but it's white plastic. And I just dipped my palette knife in some black chalk paste and kind of ran around the edges. I absolutely love how it turned out. This is, um, and these are three by eight little canvases. This is the same idea, but now you can see better. This is um, crimson Waverly paint. And then it's, I think it's called Ruby Red. It's either Ruby Red or um, Old Glory Red. It's Old Glory Red. Chalk paste is the stencil. And then I used one of the other pieces from that um, Faith, Love, Hope arrow stencil and white chalk paste. And I did the same thing on the edges. What do you guys think? I want to know. I can't decide. Which one do you like better? Tell me if you like Faith better or if you like Love better. I think this one stands out more. You can see the, the background. But you know I'm pretty boring. <laughs> I like everything cream. So I probably would say I'd be more likely to use this faith in my house. Okay, I see faith, faith, love. Lynn likes love. Christine likes love. Catherine likes faith. Christine likes love. Janet likes faith. Carolyn likes love. Debbie likes faith. Yeah, so just one more time, let me just tell you this. This one has white chalk paste on the tartan platter pattern. This one has almond latte. I was thinking that that almond latte would blend in a little better. I actually like the white better. 
but I can't change it at this point. Okay, and then this was a cute one that we did. This is um, pumpkin Waverly paint with pumpkin spice chalk paste on the tartan plaid. And then this faith, um, uh, it is part of a, a bigger stencil. I'm trying to remember which one. I don't remember. This was another one that we did yesterday. I just showed you how to actually do the um, tone on tone. And then later I stenciled it. And just so you know, the uh, chalk paste does come through the white chalk paste a little bit. So if I was doing this again, I would do the design in black. And then this is the one that I probably like the best. Perhaps you were created for such a time as this. This is part of a larger stencil from Esther 414. And um, I used ballet slipper, uh, Waverly paint, and then baby pink, I think is what it's called, chalk paste, and then white chalk paste for the design. And I did the edges, which I think kind of gives it a, a nice little touch. So I just wanted to show you those now that they are all finished and sprayed and ready to go. And let's do this one. Okay, there's so many amazing possibilities of faith stencils, which is what I love the most about Magnolia. Um, this is the one from the t-shirt and that I'm going to be using. I think we're going to do this one. This one says, faith the size of a mustard seed can move mountains. Matthew 10, or 17, 20. I think that's the one we're going to use. Oh, here's the Esther. Perhaps you were created for such a time as this. Um, there's tons of big ones and small ones. And, um, oh, I just used this one recently. Delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Grow in grace. Oh, at my Bible study today, one of the gals was saying, bless your heart. Um, this is the righteous right hand verse from Isaiah. Uh, be salty. Here's John 316. So anyways, there are a ton of faith choices that you might want to look through. And there's, for me, it's all about the pattern stencils and then the faith options. That's, those are the ones that I use the most. Um, okay, so this has been dried and I sprayed it. And I think we're going to do this one. And I think we're going to use brown chalk paste and then we'll do some brown edging. So let me just give this a quick little fuzz on my tacky towel. I have used this quite a few times, so we'll just go once. I could fuzz on my sweater, I could fuzz on my jeans. Um, I'm going to do it this way. And I do kind of want it to be centered. I don't usually measure. But I'm going to today. The design of this whole stencil is going to be lovely, lovely with this backdrop. All right, where's my brown chalk paste? This is called chocolate brown, and it's a yummy color. Look at that. Let me grab a squidgy. Oh, well darn, I don't have any more big. Oh, yes, I do have a big one. Yay. stir and put a couple blobs on here. Okay. 
and then I'm going to, well, welcome, Miss, Mr. or Miss First Time Viewer. I'm going to just pull this brown truck paste through the holes on my stencil. This truck paste is in the absolute perfect condition. Can you see how easy that's going on? Oh, wow. Okay, I have way too much, and I'm not going to throw that away. You can just scrape it off and put it right back in your little pot for next time. You do want to be careful that you don't go outside of the lines, outside of the edge of the stencil, which I did yesterday. That was so embarrassing. Okay. And this is what that looks like. I'm like, where is it? <laughs> oh my gosh, you guys. Okay, let me throw this in my tub. Now that I see it with the almond latte chalk paste background, I love it. What do you guys think? Isn't that fabulous? Um, this stencil is amazing. And this is the one that I used the word faith now that I'm looking at it to do faith on that little orange canvas. Okay, I'm just gonna close up my top paste. Don't leave these open or they will dry out for sure. Okay, make sure I don't have anything on my fingers. I'm gonna grab a piece of parchment paper to work on. And I shouldn't have closed this up so quick because I'm going to put ground around the edges. I'll use that other, um, that other palette knife. I really do prefer the one from Dollar Tree. It comes a set of three um, and they're white plastic. <laughs> Lynn says she thought it didn't come through. I know, I thought so too when I looked at that corner which was right here, but the design hadn't started yet. So, before this gets handled too much, I will take it outside and spray it with a clear matte sealer spray. But for right now, I am going to do some edging. And my little um, silicone mat is in the kitchen soaking, so I'll just use some parchment paper. Oh, and just so you guys know, uh, do it this way. When you use this parchment paper or any kind of parchment paper to craft, don't throw it away when you're done. Just fold it up and hang on to it. Because this morning, when I was painting that blue and painting this also, I used a couple of sheets of old parchment paper that I had already used for something and they have little speckles on them, but it didn't matter at all. And so it's just one less thing to go into a landfill. You know what I mean? Okay, so I have some of this chalk paste on my palette knife, and this is essentially how I hold it. You're just gonna kind of bring it along the edge and it will grab differently on different spots. So I'm gonna get that on my palette knife. Okay, I need to have some way to hold on to this a little better. I absolutely love the look of this. And I'm going to come back once I get the whole thing palette night, and I will add a little more. That's what I usually end up doing. Oh my 
my gosh, this is so pretty. This could be framed. And um, if you are making some of your Christmas gifts, think about making some art for your friends and family. Like suppose um, your BFF has a favorite Bible verse and Magnolia just happens to have that one or have something similar. You could make a beautiful piece of art to give them for Christmas. And I definitely would recommend this uh, this style. So look how cool that is. What do you guys think? I'm excited. I'm um, excited to see how the other one turns out with the blue. Let me see if I can grab just the it doesn't have the um, greatest eye faithfulness on it yet, but I'm going to do that in white chalk paste. So you've seen what pink on pink looks like, what orange on orange looks like, what red on red looks like, and now what blue on blue looks like, and this is what plaster, what cream on cream uh, essentially looks like. and. I think they're pretty fabulous. It just gives your project a whole nother dimension. Um, so tell me in the comments what you think. If you think you'll give this a try, I think you should. You can use, like I said before, you could use absolutely whatever all over pattern stencil that you have. Or if you love this um, tartan plaid, I'd grab it. I love it. I wasn't so sure when I first got it. But as I've used it, I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm going to use that stencil a ton. Um, Bev, I will get you supplies. Okay, that was the next thing I was supposed to say, which I had not gotten to yet. Um, I will compile a supply list, and also I'll grab the replay link for this video. So if you came in late and you want to just click on it and, and re-watch it or watch part of it, whatever, just to make it easy for you, and then I'll also get... Um, the direct links and I'll include the number, the names of the colors and everything. Tell you where it came from, Walmart, you know, all that good stuff. So say supplies or recipe or um, it's kind of like cooking. You need to know what the ingredients are and where they come from for some of these crafts because they're not everywhere. You can't buy this at a store. The only place you can get this is um, online and anyway so I'll make it easy for you just let me know if you would like that thanks for joining me be looking here later for photos assuming I can get that other thing dry enough this evening while there's still good light and sprayed and stenciled if I can do that tonight I will get pictures otherwise I will do the other one first thing tomorrow morning I'll put the pictures here as well as just on DIY dreaming You'd love to see what I'm going to do with the blue on blue. I know. Oh my goodness. At the start of this video, I showed all of those different colors that we did yesterday, too. So, hey, Jenny Fishback Lachance. Um, all right. Have a blessed and wonderful rest of your day, and I will see you guys later.